Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Daily Compliance News. The Daily Compliance News is an offering of the Compliance Podcast Network. August 13th, 2019, the Confetti Edition. First up, the chief of uh, ICE, the acting Border and Customs Protection Commissioner, Mark Morgan, uh, was uh, unable to explain why there had been no raids for undocumented workers on Trump uh, organization properties. He was asked about this on the State of the Nation and asked why they hadn't conducted any raids or investigations into Trump's eight properties uh, that reportedly employ undocumented workers. Uh, to probably no one's surprise, he said, uh, you really can't be sure. Uh, he really didn't know. Well, um, Looks like that the uh, raids, which ICE does not call raids, are not going to be happening at Trump's properties anytime soon. Um, next up, uh, so the Daily Compliance News is produced in Houston a- uh, every day. And the big news in Houston recently in the energy space was the uh, purchase by uh, Oxy of Anadarko. And in a uh, podcast interview on Houston Matters, our local uh, uh, public uh, radio affiliate, Orrin Steffi, uh, said that if you are a uh, Anadarko employee, you need to be afraid, be very afraid you're going to lose your job because uh, not only is it typical when there's a merger for there to be huge uh, cutting of jobs, typically at the company bought, um, without, of course, uh, any consideration of talent or um, abilities, but because of the price Oxy paid, which was way above what uh, anyone thought was a reasonable price and paid in cash, meaning they had to borrow the money, they have a huge debt. So the debt is going to be fixed by the backs and shoulders of a form, former, soon-to-be former Anadarko employees. So if you're an Anadarko uh, employee and you're listening to this podcast, I'd suggest uh, you um, connect with Julie Walden and get your resume ready because, man, you're going to need it. Uh, next up, the um, in the Financial Times, the uh, an article on the Venezuelan sanctions and what that does for Citgo's future. Uh, now, the Venezuelan opposition leader, Juan Guaido, has proclaimed that the targets, sanction targets of the U.S. Uh, will protect Citgo from seizure by Predators. Uh, unfortunately, he has not uh, taken into account the American judicial system, which uh, at least the last time I looked was separate and apart from the Trump administration, although Trump is certainly trying to, to fix that. And if the uh, creditors for Citgo can close or enforce their uh, judgments against Citgo, um, but they have against Petavesa against Citgo, which of course is a wholly owned then it's going to put uh, the ownership of Citgo in doubt. And finally, uh, today's story is from the uh, clueless idiots at the NCAA. Uh, This is courtesy of Sports Illustrated, which are not clueless idiots, but they report on clueless idiots, and that's the NCAA. After having tried to ban uh, basketball agents who didn't have college degrees, uh, note they weren't banning basketball players, they uh, have uh, said that Clemson engaged in, in an infraction for its use of confetti when um, taking pictures of uh, prospective uh, Clemson football players. So you got that right. You heard that right here. Confetti, the use of confetti um, is now an NCAA violation. You might think that they would have something better to do with their time, but I guess not. Uh, and perhaps this is the only thing they can investigate accurately. The NCAA. It is finally here, uh, the latest podcast on the Compliance Podcast Network, Why a Duck, where with Mike Volkoff, we take a look at the intersection of our beloved movie heroes, the Marx Brothers, and corporate compliance. So check it out. We enjoy it. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio.